right, welcome to the potty. I don't really know how to start them yet, but <laughs> I'm, I'm Esther and I'm here with Serena. She is my healer and friend. She's actually, do you just want to give your own intro? I think she's fucking amazing. So she's helped me rocket into a spiritual awakening. She's cleared so many blockages for me. She is so tapped in and so wise and also warm and friendly and just fun to be around because she's so real and yeah oh you're yeah, so good thank you okay well I'll introduce myself yeah <laughs> I'm Serena so I'm an intuitive healer I'm an acupuncturist and I'm a psychic medium cool and I work with people just who really want to live life at their most optimal potential yeah. And that could be in any aspect of their life, wherever they want to be in life, like wherever they're at right now, and just help them help themselves. Yes. Really guide them into being like, you can be your own healer, that you've got it in you. And I feel like everybody has the innate ability to heal themselves. Mm. And I'm just there to help activate it so people can just really feel empowered in themselves to be like, yes, okay. I've got the tools. I can do it. You can. Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. It's so beautiful. To it witness. is. And well, watching you. Yeah, I was going like, to say. Within a couple of months, <laughs> so quick. It was fucked up. So she sent, uh, Serena sent me a text maybe a, like a month ago now, and it was just a photo of me in her room on just our third session together where she just pretty much helped me kind of unlock my soul code and my mission and everything. And it was such a big, impactful time. And there was a moment where I was just talking and she was like, you're glowing and took a photo of me. And I was like, oh, it's so nice. And then she sent it to me in a text the other day. And she was like, can you believe it's only been a month? And I was like, what the fuck? It feels like it's been two years. Like so much has happened since then. And like, I'm so grateful. So my whole life has changed. My entire fucking life has changed. But like she helped me with the tools and like the clearing of everything and then it was up to me to make sure that I action the things that I need to do and to like listen to myself and listen to the guidance and listen to what my body was telling me and what my guides and everything were telling me and then yeah I think by collaborating with you and the universe I have <laughs> it's mind-blowing how much has changed in a short amount of time I can't keep up it's incredible but like you just took it and you just ran with it you're like yes 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 okay i'm fully activated i'm just charging through thanks and because when we met i remember saying to you like wow you have incredible energy and i couldn't stop fidgeting and moving like my legs were just yeah and i told so many people about that like, i'm so sorry i'm so sorry and i'm like do not be sorry please never ever apologize for your energy it's so magnificent i want you i want to help you empower like feel empowered in yourself to be like, yeah, fuck yeah, my energy is so big and it's so brilliant instead of being like, I'm too much for everybody. Because, like, what you have, oh, it's the best. Thank you. Do you know what? That um, that unboxing that you were like, because every time I went and saw you, you were like, unbox, like, you've got to unbox. Like, you, you've been boxed up. You've still got to, like, unbox more, let your energy out, let who you are shine through, all of that. And I was like, in my head, I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, I'll practice doing that a bit more. Um, and I was thinking of times, I'm like, when, when are times in life that I felt like boxed and closed off and unable to express myself and all of that? And it's, you know, I was like, surface level stuff was coming up and throughout like coming back for more sessions and everything, more and more experiences were happening that would sort of trigger a time in life when I was boxing myself in for me, for me to then go and like realize that. And, and I guess just to see how very often I was doing that and I was like whoa like have I ever even existed at like my full self and my full potential and I, I actually like I don't think so so yeah and I'm still I'm still finding areas that I box myself in I'm still finding ways to get myself out and let my energy be what it is but I think I'm like I actually think I'm a little bit scared of my own energy to be totally honest with you like I'm trying to come to terms with how like it's bigness scares me sometimes <laughs> absolutely I used to be so afraid of myself too and like and that's just always what happens so much like people are just so afraid of like their truest potential yeah and because we're and it's like comes down to like that tall poppy syndrome 
where like in Australia you'll just be knocked down for like being too big yeah yeah and now it's like oh no Mm. we can be big without being dicks yeah yeah fully yeah yeah and I think like because I was thinking about something the other day you know the saying curiosity killed the cat yeah like there's just so many little things like that that you get brought up with where it's like don't be curious about that thing because you could get hurt don't explore don't leave your comfort zone don't put yourself out there too much because someone might be mean to you or like you might find that it's a bad result so don't even try like that is so limiting and horrible and I don't know why that caught on or where it came from but I feel like I know that curiosity killed the cat's just like one of them but there's so many things like that that are ingrained in us for from a young age and all kinds of things that you know like when you're a kid and you want to be loud and you know you want to I don't know, play out some imaginary scene in public and your mum's just like, no, like, you know, stop being loud. Just be normal for a second. And your mum's probably just like, oh, I'm sorry about my child, blah, blah, blah. Like, they're just trying to exist. Like, we all, you know, like, that's so normal to be like, hey, like, now's not the time. Because kids don't know. Like, they don't know that when you're walking into a quiet doctor's surgery or whatever, now's not the time to be, like, pretending that you're a dinosaur and making loud noises or whatever. (laughs) But (laughs) absolutely the time to be who I am but as you were saying that I was just like I had like all these visions and downloads and I was like and I think this is really stemmed from like the generations that have survived had to like have come from and survived war like the war times and the depressions because it's like you, you know you cannot leave your house you cannot do this you cannot make big noises you cannot attract people to like where you are that is so true yeah, and it's just stemmed from that, and it's just now I think that that it's just that trauma that has been passed down through the generations, and we are the ones that are breaking that mold because we're we haven't, you know, we're very fortunate that we haven't had to go through that. I mean, there's things going on in the world right now, but where we are right now, mm. we're so fortunate. Yeah, so it's our job to actually do something about it because we can. When you said that. The whole, like, generational trauma thing. Because I've been getting a lot of downloads about the generational trauma stuff and I've been told, like, I need to work on my own generational trauma and I've been doing that. But, like, that makes so much sense that the generational trauma, that the, these, like, very closed mindsets, these very limiting beliefs that we're struggling with these days because, like, our generation's just like, no, like, let's get out of that. We don't need to stay in that tradition or whatever. And we're breaking it for the younger generations, which is really nice and important to do. But, like, I never thought about the fact that those mindsets were coming from trauma and being passed down like that that's the generational trauma that we need to break like fucking duh that makes so much sense yes i honestly I was, like, <laughs> I was like oh like a light bulb moment like, yeah. oh my gosh yes yeah and because we carry seven generations of trauma we do we do we okay. carry and even in our cellular memory we carry seven generations of genetics what the fuck Yes, yes, we do. Wow. And so, yeah, like in our, like you and I, we're clearing that as we do the work and heal ourselves. So to clear that and then we clear it for our future people. Sweet. Yeah, for our sons. Yeah. And then for their children as well. Yeah. And do you, is that like a, when you're clearing it, do you want to tell the people listening what that looks like? Is it different for everyone? Is it like... It's so different for everyone and it's so different as to like what their generational trauma might be, like what their family history and trauma might be. But it could be, it could just be literally just having a session on the table where you just completely relax and and then like you'll have a practitioner like maybe do a Reiki healing. You could even like clear trauma through having a massage or having a, a warm bath. So it could be like you just need to get yourself in a space of like relaxation and then it could just float away. Yeah, like set the intention for it maybe. Yeah, and whereas it could be that, it could be journaling, or you could really have to go in deeper and like get actual energetic healing where we can go down to like that cellular memory, like where it's coming from. Yeah. Because we're also working with past lives on top of that as well. Yeah. Fucking hell, hey. That's like a, that I only learned about that stuff. I'm still learning, but I only came into my awareness this year. And I just feel like a lot of people 
maybe a lot of people do already know about it and I'm just late to the party, but I think people that people that I know don't know so much about this stuff. And it's like important to realize that if you're feeling like you're like, why do I have hangups about this thing? Like I haven't had anything bad happen to me in that area. Or like, why do I even have this fear? Like it might not be your fear. Well, your soul's fear, but not your current life's fear or whatever. Absolutely, because I've worked with people who are like, I don't know, like nothing has happened in my childhood. Really, really great childhood, but I just constantly have anxiety. And like, I remember working with one person who just had the worst anxiety around men. And so we went back through and I was like, there's someone in the family lineage that has been abused. Fuck. And it ended up being like we worked out and then she went home, talked to her family, came back in. It was my grandma, never spoke about it, only spoke about it once with her daughter, which was their mum. And then we just had to clear that trauma out of her system like because she had carried it. Because when you think about like the grandma, like she had, like when she had her daughter, the daughter already had like the eggs. <sighs> In her, right? Oh, so pass through you to Rose. off. <gasps> I've got goosebumps. That's <laughs> insane. Yes, yeah, so Keep she's going. picked that up from her grandma while her mum was in utero because she was, like, in the eggy. Fuck off. Yes, like, that's how cellular memory can be passed down through um, family lineages. That makes sense. Yeah. I was picturing the soul just... Yeah, so Skipping sometimes around. it can be souls. Sometimes, like, you can get it that way. And sometimes it can just be energetically, like, if you just grow up with, like, really stressed parents. and Wow. And that's how some trauma, without being, like, so traumatic, it doesn't necessarily have to be such an extreme event. It can be just growing up with really stressed out parents. True. They're stressed out about money. And now you have issues with money. True. On that topic, how many people lately are you hearing about? Not literally how many, but, like, I feel like there's a lot of people who are going through that, what you were saying earlier but to me before we were recording, the one foot in one life and one foot in the other, like, wanting to go into maybe you've got a spiritual calling, maybe you've got um, your desires are, you know, something else, but then your everyday job is kind of keeping you feeling stuck and and maybe not in alignment or whatever. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know what you're saying because... I've, Thank God, because I was like, what am I saying? <laughs> I've experienced it where I was working in the corporate world and I was like, this is it fulfilling my soul. Yeah. I And I worked with someone who who did Reiki just like as a her little side hustle for fun and I was like, oh, you know, that sounds like a hoot. I'm into that. I'm into woo-woo. Like, I was like, I have prayer flags at my house. I burn incense. Like, <laughs> Got I a like crystal or two. Yeah, I, I like crystals. Like, surely I'd be into that. Oh. And I did it. And I went to a Reiki course and I was like, oh, fuck that shit. That is whack. That is not for me. True. Not into it. Not into it. Went back to work and was like, yeah, it was fine. It was weird. And then, like, a few years later... I was like, yeah, no, I'm still not fulfilled in my job. And I was like, I didn't want to do Reiki. That was weird. I was like, I'm going to go be a masseuse. Yeah. Because I was like, I still need to. For me, I like had this instilled in my brain because I grew up with like a lack mentality. Yeah. Around I mean, didn't life. we fucking all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I just didn't have enough money. Because I was like, I still need to make a lot of money. Yeah. And because that for me was like my security and my safety net. And so I was like, I'll become a masseuse. So I did... I did a course, like, weeknights and on weekends. Like, I gave up my weeknights and weekends for, like, nine months. So Jesus I could be, Christ. I know. <laughs> Holy shit. This is, like, I was, like, so invested. That's good. In this. And you have so many skills now and so many offerings and everything. So it's, like, you know, it's all been all your learnings and efforts have been worth it up until this point and then you're going to keep going and progressing. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, it keeps going. And so I know what it's like, like, because I had one foot in the door and one foot out like at the other and I was like I'm gonna do this and it, it was it was it was really really hard and it was so stressful and I did my massage training loved it I was like yeah good for me and then I was like no not enough I'm gonna go study acupuncture <laughs> so once you get that ball rolling it it just rolls and but the fear was how am I gonna do a full-time uni degree without like a 
full-time job. Yeah. And it ended up being that I worked out with my boss that I could work there one day a week. And that was just enough to, like, cover everything that I needed. Good. Like, cover my rent. And then I also had government support. And and that was just enough. And I just had to learn that, like, oh, my God, I don't need all, like, this disposable income. Yeah. Like. Did you have to make any big sacrifices, apart from all your time? Yeah, massive, like, sacrifices. Like, giving up, like, because at the time I was living in Melbourne, so that was, like, giving up all those dinners out, all the nights out, all those, like, nights out, like, with friends, like all those vendors, I had to give up so much of my social life mm-hmm. to really invest in like my personal life and like this new career I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Do but you? Like, I just want people to know that, like, even if you want to go on like a spiritual journey, you don't always need to be like, oh, I've got to quit my job and then I've got to become something else. Like, sometimes a lot of people will just need to do a little spiritual journey just for themselves they might not need to become a practitioner yeah but for me like it was so ingrained in me like I was like I have to do this I have to do this it was just such a big calling that I couldn't get away from cool that's incredible I'm so glad you went after it thank god (laughs) I was so willing to give up everything wow yeah that's awesome yeah you obviously like heard your fucking calling and just went after it yeah, and I feel like it had been a calling that I had just shut down for so long. Mm. I was like... Do you remember the feeling it felt like when you were kind of like shutting it down and listening, to, you know, hearing it, but not going after it? I don't remember the feeling, but I remember life just, it wasn't flow. It didn't flow. It wasn't easy. Yeah. It was just like one thing after another, like stressful colleagues, like... I would just go home and cry all the time because, like, my colleagues were just so horrendous. And mm. I'm like, what kind of life is this? Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, and I thought that was just what life is. That's crazy, hey. Yeah. I remember a point in my life, too, when it sucked and I just thought that's what it was. And, like, I didn't know any better or different. And I was like, But I was like, it can't. It, this cannot be it. Yeah, There's- and I remember, like, trying to look for new jobs, and I was like, it doesn't matter where I go, it's still going to be, like, if I'm in an office, it's still going to be, like, the same shit, different mm. location. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. because you, when you realise that if you're, like, you're the problem, not that you're the problem, but if your life is not working out and it's feeling stagnant or you've got blocks everywhere, it's like if you try to move towns or you try to move jobs or whatever, like, your problems will follow you if you don't actually get to the bottom of them no matter fucking where you are. And it's like when you actually start to be like, okay, what is it that I'm feeling? Like what do I really want to do? What am I? What do I hate about the situation I'm in? And what makes me happy if I fantasize about it? And then following that stuff and you realize that all the blocks actually start shifting. It's just really scary to actually follow the stuff that feels good. Yeah, like when you get more in alignment and in integrity with what you're like meant to be actually doing, everything flows. Like. And I remember, like, when I was doing my massage course and studying acupuncture, like, it was hard work, but life was easier. Yeah. Like, a lot easier. True. Hard in different ways, but in my, I think because I had less anxiety. Yeah. And that just made life so much more easier. Yeah. 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 Because you get more sure of yourself and what you're doing and who you are and, like, you feel better in, in yourself. Yeah, and I think for me, along my studies, it was more, it became more about, like, a remembering. Yeah. A cool. remembering of, like, why I came here and who I am, who I actually am, whereas I was trying to fit myself into, like, this mould of what I thought I was meant to do in life, like, yeah. go get a corporate job, and, like, because it looked so fucking cool on TV, wearing yeah. high heels to work every day. And being busy. And being so busy and wearing, like, beautiful suits to work. And now, you know, now I, like, rock a linen suit. I love it. And it's, I still get that, like, chic aspect and have so much fun in it. But I'm like, I'll never wear high heels again. No, fuck that. Oh, my God, no. no. I mean, yeah, if you love heels, great, wear them. But I just can't. I can't. It's just not for me anymore. No, it hurts. Well, it's not good for my back. No. No. Oh, no. my toes are just ruined because of it. So. Yeah. Oh, not good. I was going to ask you something, but I forgot what it was. It was to do with what you were just saying. And then I got thrown off by the heels. What were you just saying again? Here's my ADHD like, coming um, through. Like fitting into a box and then... 
Like, oh, yeah. yeah. So now that you have, like, listened to your soul path and you're, you know, in alignment and feeling powerful and strong and good and taking all the steps that you need to take and everything. Yeah. And obviously, like, you've been in this world for a while now and you're killing it. Um, what, like, what is your soul mission up until, like, this point anyway? Like, what what do you know of it so far? Because I think... Like, do you feel like you know all of it or do you feel like you're good? Because I feel like for me, I'm going to find out more about mine as I go. Like, I feel like I know more now and I didn't know anything before. And now I know where I'm meant to be now, which is great. But I feel like I don't know what the future holds and I don't know what it will look like down the line. But like, do you know what, what's your, what's your mission? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Also, you can speak. I'm just going to move this camera up to get a different angle. I feel like. My sole mission, like, when I first started, um, like, doing the massage and the Reiki. Oh, yeah, and back, like, going back, like, when I first was like, oh, no, Reiki's not for me. A few years later, after I started studying acupuncture, I went back and did Reiki too. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, still not for me, hey. And then I, I went back a few more years later and did my master's, and I was like, yeah, no, nah, it's still not for me. But I don't know, really? there was just, like, a calling. To do it, and what then I'll was get, it? Are you going to get to I'll, that? I'll, I'll stop interrupting. <laughs> my sole mission, and I know, like especially while I was studying, my sole mission was to come back to me. Yeah. First, and for me to do that, I had to go through some crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, I feel emotional talking about it. Already. It's okay. Good. <laughs> That's great. Let it out. Do whatever. Um, and like, even though, like, you know, I was working as a practitioner, like a masseuse, and doing some energetic healings and at at one point I studied kinesiology so I was a kinesiologist you've done literally everything I I just keep adding are you sure you're not a many gen (laughs) I definitely have many gen rising energy yeah like I just I just love learning so much and I like evolving in myself as well but now that you say that because like it's just hit like the last maybe two or so years I think I hit that mission and then from there, then I was like, okay, I need to evolve. But the whole mission for me to come back to myself, it really came about, like, with motherhood. Mm. Because, like, while I was studying at uni, I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with, like, gynecology and obstetrics and, like, working with women, like, so beautiful. Like, that's the field I'm going to go into. And then I, had a, then I had a baby. And I... So I had my son, and it was a traumatic birth, and so I, like, I ended it, like, I got really severe postnatal depression, Mm -hmm. and I just spiralled, like, out, and I was like, this is, I'm not meant for this, like, I'm not made for this, like, this is not the person, like, the mum I thought I was going to be, like, I thought I would be such a fun, loving earth mother. Oh, honey. And I was like, who is this person? Like, she's she's not loving. She's sad all the time. She can't do it. I felt so incompetent in myself. Like, it was... It was so hard. And it was like... Like, looking back now, I know I had to go through it because I had to go through those depths of despair. Yeah. So much for me... To be able to grow and to hold such a bigger space for other people. And I look back now and I'm so grateful for it. Like, yeah. there's just nothing I'm more grateful for in my life than having gone through that experience because without that, I don't think I'd be the practitioner that I am today. Yeah. Because I just have so much more empathy for people in, like, ways that, you know, I was really empathetic before and I, I like... But now it's just the space that I can hold for others and, like, embody Mm. them in, like, a beautiful, warm, safe space. Like, when people are going through that. And it made me really see that so much of you changes, like, not just after having kids, but any life experience, no matter how big or small it is. Like, you're just constantly evolving and changing. And I feel like I used to be a little bit more rigid 
before that, but now I'm more flexible and I see that in people yeah. now so much more. And I'm like, we've got to be more malleable and flexible. Yeah. Like, because, like, whatever's going to come around, like, we've just got to be, like, so strong in ourselves and ready for, like, whatever life throws at us. Yeah. Because it's all just, like, levelling up and learning anyway. Yeah. And so for me, that was... I thought, okay, this is it. This is the peak of me, like, getting to know myself. I've got to dig myself out of this hole. And so it took... And I didn't want to go down... I like, not that I have any issues with, like, the medical route. I just... I had this drive in me that I was like, I need to do this and it was just something that I knew I needed to do personally for Mm. myself and I wanted to do it as natural as I possibly could and I went and saw well by this stage we had moved up to the Gold Coast from Melbourne before having Malachi and I was like I looked at my husband I was like I'm booking a flight down to Melbourne I'm gonna go see my kinesiologist I'm bringing Mal because he was still being fed by me And I was like, I've got to see my kinesiologist. I can't find anyone on the Gold Coast that is going to hit the spot. Like, I was just trying to find the right person. Yeah. So I did that, and that was brilliant. But then I was like, you know, I can't afford to do that. No. Every month. No. Um, So I became a kinesiologist. (laughs) In myself, I went into my studies. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is so funny. And so that was like, that was me also helping myself out because, and now that's why I'm so passionate about assisting others, helping themselves. Yeah. Because it's not about just relying on someone else. It's about being ignited and someone seeing you in it and saying, hey, you actually do have the power. Let's, let's like see where, how we can ignite it in you. You're really good at doing that too. Like, exceptionally good at doing that. Okay. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it. I'm like, guys, see yourself. I see your greatness, so you should see your greatness. Yes. So, that, yeah, that was really big and transformative. And I thought, this is it. I'm getting myself out of the hole. Good. And then, here we go. I thought, like, I'd hit the low. Last that, low. that always happens. It and always then, fucking happens. You think you hit the low, and then you get shown more. Yeah. I'm going to need a tissue for this. Okay. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. I'm so happy. Might wake up tomorrow with a vulnerability. I like hang over and be like, oh god, what did I say? Well, you can, I'll, you'll see this. It's all part of my story. Exactly. And so, as I'm like transitioning, like really working on myself to help myself get out of like um, postpartum depression and like depletion, just everything. I was so wiped out. My brother passed away. Dang. Yeah. So that was a biggie. And because he he chose to go. Yeah. Like, that was his choice. He he took his own life. And I I have so much respect for him because I'm like, that is such a ballsy man mm. to do. And the night we found out, I was just like, all I could say was like, fuck, I have so much respect for that decision you made. Like, that was... Like, so much love and respect for him to make that decision. Uh, But then it was also, like, a mirror to me as well. Like, I better get my shit together Mm. because I don't want that to be me. And so that was also, like, another notch for me to be, like, all right, I've really got to do this, get myself out of this space. And then that was just, like, it ignited me so much to be... Like, strongly in myself, but now it, like, really ignited my passion for helping others help themselves. Yes. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, when you don't feel seen in life, and because we are coming into this modern world where everyone feels disconnected, even though we're so connected, Mm. no, like, you can, like, people can, like, like your posts and write nice things, but, like, when you still don't feel seen. It's so surface level, though, in that way, in that internet kind of way. And, like, people just don't feel seen and heard, like, properly. They're just like, why? why?" Yeah. 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 That's it. When you don't feel seen, you feel like you're on an island by yourself. 
and everyone else is like across the way and you're like you can see them but you're like they can't see me I don't, they don't know I'm even over here yeah and, and like, like what I'm putting out into the world on the socials is like just what I want them to see but it's yes. not actually me yeah because we're also scared of like criticism and probably all that generational trauma passed down before that you were talking about yeah and so that was that also like pushed me in my soul mission to just be the best me that I could be yeah like as much as I could like nobody's going to be perfect every day but just feel better in myself and like so solid in myself especially like as a practitioner yeah and so that really ignited that mission for me and just also healing healing through all of that like when you think you're done you're like oh there's more layers and like grief is just so it's not linear it's just all over the place you're just like yeah I'm rocking this and then you just get a wave and you're like ah yeah and then also for me it was just like how I had like imposter syndrome hard like how can I be a practitioner that holds space for people when I felt I was still having the trauma of my postnatal depression of like fuck I was shit and like I knew I wasn't a shit mum I was just chemically imbalanced yeah so hardcore and I can say that now but back then I was like oh how how am I how can I do this and yeah. there's just that little perfectionist mentality that I've grown up with it's mm. like was like eating away at me yeah. and so for me the the mission was like to better myself and then because I've done that and I've done all like the really hard groundwork fuck I know how to inspire people to do it in themselves mm. and it's so inspiring to watch people take that leap of faith in themselves to be like I really want to live in my most optimal potential. Good. So I'm going to fucking dig this shit out. And that would obviously feel like you didn't go through all that for nothing. Like, that would be so rewarding, being like, I went through this so then I could then show others how. Yeah. I guess. Yes. And so now my sole mission, like, now that I've hit that and I'm like, I'm, I've been living in that reality of, like, helping people help themselves for the last couple of years, but now it's like, the soul mission is getting bigger and bigger and it's like it's all about activating more and more people yeah yeah it's yeah. just so not just like it's more than just one-on-ones like it's like big groups and I'm yes. like I'm not actually sure how we're going to get there but I know it's just it's going to happen and I I have so much trust and faith in it and I'm so happy to flow along with how it all pans out. You're really good at doing that. Mm-hmm. So the thing that comes to mind is like when you pulled the women together for the gathering and you were just like, I have to gather the women because you had downloads about that. And mm-hmm. then you like, you were like, why am I gathering the women? And you didn't get any more downloads, just like get some cheese and gather the women. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and you were trusting of that. And then when you did, like, I immediately knew. I was like, I have to, I have to be there. And I messaged you and I was like, I don't know what a medicine woman is. And can I come? And you were like, yes, lol. <laughs> and then and I was like, can I bring my friends? And so I brought, like, a pile of friends along. And everyone had the most, like, and what, like 30 people came or something. Yeah. And I had so many downloads about it beforehand. I had, like, super clear visuals about the room, how full it was going to be, the emotions that were going to be going around the room, which is so funny because I was like, wow, someone's going to go through something really massively impactful and moving. And it was like everyone, but also like I had a massive experience there. So I was like, that's so funny that I was like picking up on my own future experience. I didn't even see it that way. Um, And everyone that I brought along that I was talking to afterwards was just like, that was the most like amazing healing, activating, like everyone got something out of it that was really big for kind of pushing them along their current path a bit more um and I am so grateful that you put that together because that helped me so much it's insane like I have had goosebumps like this entire talk by the way (laughs) (laughs) yeah um and yeah so I think that was just like a really beautiful example of you being like oh I've just I'm going with the flow you didn't even fucking know what, what for and like so with future gatherings that you have if you're ever just like oh I feel like I need to have a gathering you know on Tuesday night at 11 p.m. I'll be like I'm fucking coming because it's obviously for a reason <laughs> you know it's so good yeah and I'm just gonna run with the downloads as they come in yeah it's all about like now I'm expanding more and more mm. and I'm just like okay I'll roll with it 
What does that trust feel like for you? It feels good. It feels safe. Yeah. It feels, I feel, I used to get really agitated in like that unknown space and like the space between like, I am here now and this is where I want to be. And I used to just like die in the middle of like, ah, nothing's moving fast enough. But now I'm like, this is the softness, like the space in between is like the place where I can rest, I can integrate, I can be soft Love in myself that. before I launch into the next big mission. Because oh, God, I'm obsessed with that. The missions are big. Like when they come along, like that next upgrade, they're always so big. And so you're like, when you're in it, you're like, I'm in a, I'm in a whirlwind. Oh my God, this is so much. So now I just lean in in the soft space and the space between and I'm like yes I'm happy good yeah oh my god that's nice it's really it's a really nice place to be it took me it's taken me some years yeah I can imagine yeah I'm still in the place where it feels absolutely sickening between I'm not like frustrated by any of it I'm like oh it's cool like but like what's happening next yeah kind of kind of yeah well it's more I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it is. I think it's just multiple things. So, like, when I was working in this marketing, like, I, before the marketing job I have now, I was in this other marketing role in, like a, like, a studio setting where we do marketing for, like, a bunch of different businesses all at once. And I just had, like, a, a really, like, it was the right place at the right time for me, but then, it, you know, the expiry date came and I was still there and it was, like, not time to go. And I just had these like big pulls inside me of just like, I can't be here. I need to do something better with my energy. And like, I was, I knew, I had no idea. Like I wasn't even spiritual then. This was like earlier this year. <laughs> so, so funny. Um, and I had like, no, I was like vaguely spiritual. But I think what had happened was I think I'd had my first session with you around the time that I started to be like, oh, I need to leave my job. I can't remember. Like, but anyway, it was all similar timing, but I was like, I had this feeling in me. I was like, I need to get a different job. I need to do something else. And it kind of just came in hot. And I, I was like, I physically am feeling completely out of alignment by working there. Cause I was like, I don't like social media ads. I don't, cause I being a marketer, I know what the prerogative is of a social media ad. I know what's actually happening to people with them. And I, I, I don't, I'm not against them entirely because I feel like I understand that it's 2023 and the way that these systems work is we've kind of been pigeonholed into having to do that for the most part, unless you can be really successful with organic marketing. But I do think that organic marketing is still a very possible and wholesome, beautiful thing. Um, so that's what I try and do. But anyway, I went off track. So I'm working in this marketing place, super out of alignment. I'm doing, I was like in the social media ads department. I was like, I feel like I'm just fucking you know, manipulating people. And I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. I can't do this anymore. And I had nothing to go to. I was like, I had a prospect of a job maybe, but it was very much like maybe it will happen, maybe it won't. And I was like, I that's good enough for me. I was like that little taste of like, oh, I might be going somewhere else was like, yep, that's it. I'm fucking done. I remember walking into work one day and I was sitting at my desk and I was like in my head and I was just like, I'm going to vomit. Like I have to go quit. I have to quit now. And then I was like, I don't even have anything else to go to. I'm like in this internal dialogue of just like, what are you going to do? Like, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What are you going to, how are you going to fucking pay the bills? What if he wants you to leave like immediately? What if you don't get like much of a period in between to figure it all out and blah, blah, blah. And, and I just, all of a sudden it was like my body just started walking and I was like, oh, okay, we're doing this now then. <laughs> Took off without okay, me. Body. Yeah, I was like, like <laughs> I was possessed. <laughs> um, no. And then I went, I just sat down in my boss's office and I was like, hey, you got a minute? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I quit. And he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, what are you going to do? Where are you going? I was like, I have no idea. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and that was like leading up to that. I hadn't, I'd been constipated for like three days. I literally couldn't poo for three days. It was yeah. like, my body was You're like, holding on. yeah, my body was like, all right, if you're not fucking listening, I'm going to make it hard for you to do anything else. And so then I went home that day after quitting and like pooed immediately. It was amazing. Sorry for the TMI. <laughs> <laughs> three days later. Yeah. And so that, that was like, that was the, but I remember sitting on the toilet not that specific time. It was this other time I was just peeing and I was feeling so incredibly anxious. So I was in this period of time where I hadn't left my old job yet, hadn't found a new job. 
I just, all I knew was that my rent is a lot. I live in Burley. Everything's expensive. I'm a single mom with a teenager to feed. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? And I was like, I can't be there. And I don't know where I'm going. And I just had this like download come through clear as day. And it was just like, you're struggling. Lean into the discomfort. Lean into it. It's uncomfortable. But if you, if you try and control the outcome, your life will be just another version of something that you could create based on what you currently know, based on your current thought systems, your current belief systems, all of that stuff. Everything you've ever been up until this point, if you use all of that to try and control the outcome, you're just going to get another version of something you've had before. And I was like, yeah, hot damn. Okay. What a download. I know. And I was like, okie dokie. And it was so clear. It was so loud. I was like, all right, I understand. Thank you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, lean into the discomfort. And so anytime I felt that like anxiety, like my stomach was in fucking knots and I couldn't sit still and my heart was fluttering. And I was like, my, my nervous system was pretending like I was going to fucking die. And I was like, lean into it. I was like, cool. It's fine. I feel very uncomfortable right now, but I'm just trusting that I'm going to find something and something will pop up and it will be exactly what I need to take me towards exactly where I need to go. And I didn't know where I needed to go. I had no fucking clue, but I was like, I'll figure it out. It'll all happen. Sure enough, that job prospect came through and I now work for one of my friends and it's been amazing because I can work from home and she's so chill and she's just one of those people that's like, yeah, I mean, like as long as you get the work done, like do it whenever. And yeah, I, I have had the opportunity to do things like this, like start the podcast and come get my healing sessions with you and Kaja and like do little like walks on the beach and swims and all the things that I need to do to get my body and everything to slow down and be more content while still having like a full-time income working from like, you know, so grateful for that. And then it happened again where I was just minding my own business and all of a sudden a download came through and it was like, hey, time to quit your job. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> no. Uh, but no, I didn't say no, but I was like, okay, what, 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 what? Because at first it kind of felt like I was having anxiety and I was like, I'm just reading my book. It's a nice day. It's like sunny. It was a Saturday yeah. and I was minding my own business and then, you know, just sort of processing the book that I just read, like my eyes were closed and I'm laying outside on the grass and then I suddenly started thinking about my boss and like my work and everything and I was like, no, don't have anxiety about work right now. It's to like bring yourself back to the present moment. You're just laying on the grass. It's really nice. You don't need to think about work and everything. And then it kind of pushed through again. And I heard like, no, like, listen, we're trying to show you something. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So then I let it come through. And all I saw was these like different visuals of like me kind of like saying to Belle, like, hey, I can't work for you anymore. And then me like doing a healing session on a table, like out the back by the water in my own backyard. And then, Beautiful. yeah. And like, I don't think I would I'd be obviously not doing healing sessions out there, but it was like, this is a safe place for yes. you, obviously. So they showed me that there. And I can't remember what else I was shown now, but it was very clear. It was just like, it's time to move into this like healing space. It's time to move into more alignment and take the step. And also I think it was this, what I'm in now is a really big lesson of trust and abundance. So I had to then, you know, I also meditated that night. I was like, please show me again. Like, give me another sign. Like, am I just, <laughs> am I just trying to get out of my job? <laughs> like, I is this actually, up? yeah. That shit up. yeah. <laughs> and then like, like, yeah. So I had confirmation again a couple of times and I was like, sweet. So then the following day I told my boss and I was like, Hey, and she was like, all right, well, do you want to go down to part-time like next month or whatever? And I was like, I mean, like, I can if you want me to. But I was like, I have nothing lined up. And she was like, okay, well, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, so are you leaving or not? I was like, maybe. I just need you to know that I have a foot out the door. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the universe wants me to leave and I don't know when or how or what. I just need you to know that I'm building up another life because I can't be dishonest. I would not be able to look at her in the eye yeah. if I didn't say, like, I'm working on something else to That's try and leave. That's a beautiful relationship, though. Yeah. To have with your boss, who was your friend. Yeah. You like to be like, hey, I'm kind of, I've got one foot out the door and I don't know what I'm doing next. Yeah. And she was so nice. So she recommended me to um, Tara Hegarty, this, like, business kind of healer coach chick. And she did a session with me and was like, hey, you should do intuitive marketing. And I was like, oh, my God, I should. And she was like, you're not going to just, like, jump out of that job into this one. But it's this, like, transition period where you'll be able to build up making money, working for yourself. You'll be in the healing space. You'll be able to learn from all the healers. You'll be able to get the healers out there. And that, like, fits in with what you want to do with helping everyone and, like, all this stuff. And I was like, oh, my God, that's actually amazing. And then I felt this, like, total comfort because I was, like, shitting my pants when I had to, like, get out of that comfort zone and be like, hey, Belle, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to work for you for much longer. 
and I don't know where I'm going and what the fuck. <laughs> and then, you know, I felt like, oh, now I feel like I have a bit more of a plan and I have a goal and I'm able to like set up a website and I can actually take steps and just keep telling the universe and like showing myself and, you know, the universe that I'm ready to do whatever the next thing is. I'm collaborating with it. I'm working towards the goal of stepping into alignment and everything, even though I don't actually even really know where I'm going or what I'm doing. I feel more abundant and trusting and relaxed than I've ever felt in my fucking life, but I've also never known less about what I'm doing. So beautiful. Which is it's wild. So, it's like so complicated and bittersweet. It's like, I feel so good, but then I'm fucking, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So what do you feel like your soul mission is for you at the moment? Um, well, God, it shows up in so many different ways. So, okie dokie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, so like I feel like I gotta plant seeds. I think I'm a gardener, <laughs> an energetic gardener. Literally, or just yeah, or like a some kind of energetic frat boy just planting a seed in all these women everywhere. <laughs> That's so gross. Mine was cuter. It was so much more. cuter. You like. <laughs> Yuck, Esther. Yuck. <laughs> oh my god. You know I see things. Yeah, it's totally. Like, Holy I'm shit. I'm so sorry. Um, no, so I think I need to put seeds into people. So I need to continue. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. Hey, it's like I so earnestly am like, I need to go out in the world and put seeds into people, whether it's through like a podcast or a video or talking to them one on one or like doing like a Reiki session on them or something like that. But in saying that, when it's like, what does that mean, Esther? I don't fucking know. It's like, it's not an no activation, it's like an inspiration. Yeah, okay. Type of thing. Like, I know what you're talking about because I know your seeds. Yeah. Um, and I've seen them being planted into people. Okay, great. And then, like, they, you know, need it to be activated in themselves. Um, yeah, the, I guess the only way is, like, to call it a seed. Yeah. it is just, like, planting a little seed. But you don't do it consciously. Yeah. You do it. That's what I've learnt. Yeah. Kaja said the same thing. She was like, like, you're just out planting seeds and people so unconsciously. And I was like, well, that's nice. Like, as soon as somebody's <laughs> in your vicinity, like, they are accepting the seeds. How cool is that? It's awesome. It's so cool. It's but really I don't, cool. like, what does that mean? Like, where are they going? What are they doing? Like, what's <laughs> happening? I'm so that's the thing we've got to work out. <laughs> your soul mission. Is that your soul uh, mission to, like, just <laughs> sow some seeds? Like, currently, I think so. But I think, like, there will be a point where... Though, like, I feel like, because you're putting seeds in people as well, I feel like we're putting seeds in people and then they'll go and do their own healing on themselves, kind of like what you're saying, help people help themselves, that kind of thing, and then either circle back around when it's time for, like, the next thing that they need from us or we'll have helped so many other healers that they'll be able to find whoever they need to then just keep this, like, spider web trickling out of, like, healers helping people and mm -hmm. maybe even more people becoming healers and helping more people because there's, like, 8 billion people on the fucking earth that need to level up their fucking vibration and there's just, like, so much work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think about it all at once. Yeah. I think... Um, and that's why you... Like, and now I see it in you now where you just got really overwhelmed by your own... Yeah. Bigness. I, yes. And potential. It, yeah. Like you just kind of went, ah, and then just looked blankly and you're like, I don't think I can do it. That <laughs> was like a, I'm exhausted already. <laughs> Literally. I go through waves of that. I go through waves of where I'm like, but I've been tr pulling myself out of doing that. So whenever, if I look at everything at once and I think of everybody in the world that I'll probably potentially help. Not no. saying that I have to help. No, not saying I have to help literally everyone. But yeah. when I think about everyone that I will potentially help along the line. I, too much to think about. Yeah, I cannot. Because, like, I know I can do it. But if I think about all of it once, I don't want to get, like, analysis paralysis and just be like, er, and stare at a wall instead of completing my mission. Yeah. <laughs> um, you so kind of have to of... think of it as, like, 
you know, one seed that you help activate in one person is like, you know, the little pebble that drops into the water and then it causes the ripple effect. So that one pebble then that one person is going to cause a ripple effect. So it's yes. like, oh, I don't need to, like, do 8 billion people. <laughs> myself. Like, myself. <laughs> Great. Like, I just need to do a few. Yeah. And then the ripple effect is going to... Take care of itself. Take over. That's yeah. good. That's relieving. Yeah. That's what I'll think about. Less pressure on you. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah. That's nice. That's a really nice way to think about it. Absolutely. And it's a lot of people come to me and they're like, do you work with children? And I and I say, yeah, I do. Um, it's not my main priority because my main priority is working with the parents mm-hmm. to help the parents help themselves and feel better in themselves, like feel at their most optimal, mm-hmm. so then they can better parent. Fuck yeah! Their Fuck yeah! Oh my god! Yes! yes. <gasps> you just reminded me of something so important. Yeah. Because that's that's it. That's exactly what needs to happen. And like, it's like yeah, I can I can work with your child, like just to clear whatever's happened now and just help them stabilize. But it's like, yeah, the love for me is like helping the parents. Yeah. And like, not even yeah, it's just helping them help themselves and in turn it like fuck yeah helps the kids yes yeah that's it it. oh fucking yes i forgot about that i was talking to a journalist the other day and um because she was like oh so like your stance on like you know we're getting a job too soon blah 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 while he's still a teenager for money like she was like so you think like a lot of um a lot of this comes down to parenting differently than how all these people who are disagreeing with you are parenting and I was like well I don't want to like start some fucking war in how people are parenting because like each their own everyone's got so many different circumstances and if like oh my god we come from so many different upbringings and everything like oh my god yeah so yeah so but I was like what is more important to me is helping people realize that they can reparent themselves and then if they get themselves to a point where they can emotionally regulate themselves properly, if they can look at all their own shadow work, if the parents and the adults, and even if they, even if you just like want to be, you know, just you're someone's aunt or you're just an adult in the world and you don't even have your own kids or whatever, like people, kids are still going to experience you and you're going to impact them in one way or another. And pets too. Yes. Like pet parents. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So yes. Oh my God. Oh yes. You just, made me think of something else um but yeah and i was saying like if we can just get everyone to get to the point where they are less reactive and more intentional about their responses and they're thinking about the future of their kid and how each moment is going to impact how their kid it thinks in the world and exists in the world and it's not to say you have to constantly monitor everything you're saying and doing but it like, if I think about the times when I've been unconsciously parenting versus consciously parenting, the conscious parenting is mentally, like, I'm not going to lie, it's exhausting. It fucking is. But it's also something I've just done my entire life, like, so far, anyway, for the last 15 years. And there's been moments here and there when life's gotten, like, really hard and it's been a really big struggle and I've just, like, I haven't been able to consciously parent as much or I've just been so taken over by, like, a dense sort of energy that I am, like, more reactive or whatever. And I haven't been in that kind of place in a long time. But when I think about that, that was that kind of feeling of, like, that unconscious parenting where I'm, I, I feel like that's just where a lot of people are, where they're a victim to their to the world we live in, really. Like, it, we can't slow down. Both parents have to be out working. We have like mums doing most of the emotional workload at home a lot of the cleaning and everything also working a full-time job also having to like be there for their kids like emotionally dealing with the kids problems at school like making sure they do their homework like holy fuck like that's oh, so wow. much and having um also just like being on social media and stuff and like you know just absorbing that much information constantly like the world is so fast and so unforgiving and so it's really hard to be able to create the mental space to heal yourself or to consciously parent the kid or like whatever it is, like all of that takes energy. And so it's really important to me to kind of push the world into a direction where we're slowing down and we're able to, and we're not forced to exist like this just to not die. 
Like, everyone's living in survival mode, and that is fucked up. That's, like, literally not at all what we were here to do. And, it, like, everyone's just so used to it, and we don't know that we can live differently, but we can. And everyone's just, like, so scared to make a shift and so stuck. Like, if I'm ever talking to someone and they're having a problem and they're like, oh, I just can't get out of this situation, and I'm like, what if you do this? What if you do this? And like, no, but, like, I like where I live, or no, because I... I don't want to, like, what if I can't get a job? Or, like, what if I this? What if I that? And I'm like, five more years is going to go by of you doing this exact same thing if you don't, yeah, if you don't tackle one of those out. things. And it doesn't have to be, like, such a huge change. It's just a tiny step. Yeah. Tiny step. Tiny step. Tiny Even just step. sideways. Yeah. Just fucking Google it. I don't know. Look look it up on the internet. Whatever it is that you want to do. Take a take a step. Just feel feel the inspiration. And that can be enough to ignite it in yeah. yourself. It doesn't have to be so... Well, I'm an Aries, so all I know is, like, d- d- fucking dive in, <laughs> get lost in it, and then, like, dive into the deep end and make your way to the shore. Yes! <laughs> but I'm saying, just dip your toe in. Dip yeah. your toe in. That's more than enough. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And then, like, once you feel the water, it's like you might really enjoy it and be like, oh, okay, yeah. going in for a paddle. Yeah. I kind of got this visual then of like someone like being presented a bowl of soup or something, but they were previously told that if they ate that soup that they might be like they might experience some kind of like discomfort or something like that, or they don't like soup or whatever. And it's like, just taste it. Taste it. You'll be okay. And then they taste the soup and they realize they actually fucking love the soup and suddenly they eat the whole bowl of soup and they realize that bowl of soup was the most nourishing, amazing thing for them and their life got better from eating it. That was what I just saw in my head when you were talking. (laughs) It's just coming out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I, I, like, know that personally because my son, he's very sensitive eater. He's a little empath. So oh, yeah. he's a little in human design projector. Yep. And he's also a huge empathic person. And so for him, textures, he's very sensitive to textures and tastes. And this year he's really just blossomed in around food. Cool. Everything had to be really, really plain. And I get that because I'm a bit of a plain girl too. But he, I remember one time I, he tried chicken schnitzel. And like when he was a baby, he would eat anything. And then as he grew, like, like he just kept pulling away from things. Mm. And so, yeah, it was a couple of months ago. And I was like, mate, I swear to God, you're going to love it. It's so good. It's so yummy. It's crunchy. It's delicious. And he tried it. He's, oh, he smashed the whole thing. <laughs> and I was like, did you like it? He goes, Mum, I loved it. And I was like, will you eat more? And he's, yeah, Mum, I was just scared. Oh, honey. <gasps> and he's like, I was just too scared. And so since then, <sighs> I'm like, I, I promise you, I won't ever give you anything that makes you feel scared. I Like, I know your flavours. I know what will feel like, the texturally, <gasps> like, just... Please trust me. Like, oh. trust that I have, like, your best interest at heart and, like, trust that I'll only bring <gasps> food to you. That is beautiful. Like, and it's, yeah, it's been him saying, like, oh, okay, I feel like I want to try this today. How old is he? He's five. Wow. And said so tonight, he's like, Mum, I'd like a, tonight I really want to have a pizza with some sauce on it. Oh, stop <laughs> <laughs> Live a little, oh my god. Pizza and cheese, base and cheese. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, and it's beautiful to watch. So it's just little things like. Like wanting to actually, he's like asking to get out of his comfort zone a bit there as well. Yeah, like, how amazing. Absolutely. It's just, you just need to just bite, like, just bite the bullet once and yeah. be like, oh, okay, I can actually pull myself out of my comfort zone and I didn't die. Yeah, 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 that's it. And when you realise that you didn't die, you're like, oh, that was actually kind of, kind of fun. Yeah, and like, oh, it's not unsafe Yeah. to try new things. Like, And then you feel more confident. Yeah. It feels so much more confident. Every time I get out of my comfort zone, I feel more confident. Yeah. Yeah. What you said about um, telling him that you have the, your, his best interest at heart is so beautiful and something that, like, Oh, keep going with that because I do the same thing with Noah and he's like 15 now and at school the other maybe a few weeks ago he was called me on the way in no he got to school but he was late and he was going to the office to get a late note but he was like if I don't like to get a little slip to go into the class or whatever yeah. but he's like if I don't have you call or have a late note or whatever I could get a detention and I was like well babe like we have been in this position where 
every single day you're moving really slowly because I know that you don't really want to go to school and obviously like I get it yeah <laughs> I get it so. yeah <laughs> so I was like but I was like like legally I have to send you to go get an <laughs> education so if I don't like I could go to jail <laughs> And I was like, I don't want a homeschool bed. Yeah. Like, if I, I was work. like rich enough to put the time into that and mm. also have my own space and mental downtime from working and homeschooling and like all of that, like absolutely fine. Like that, I've got nothing oh God, against homeschooling, yeah. but I couldn't do all of this and that. I would neck myself, like no fucking way. Sorry. And then. <laughs> Um, Jules, my husband, to homeschool mail, and I'm like, you do it, you do it. Yeah. I, I don't have the capacity to do it, but like, I'd love you to do it. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be great if someone did. That'd be nice. It'd be great if you did it. Yeah. I'm patient. Oh my god, yeah. Well, tell me if he does. I want to know how that goes because yeah. that'd be awesome. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, so he's going into school and he was stressing about possibly getting a detention. And I was like, you have been kind of struggling out the door. And I was like, every single day I have to put so much of my energy into getting you out the door. And I was like, that is really tiring for me. And I want you to work with me on that. And I was like, I've been, you know, trying to get you to do things slightly differently, shift the routine a bit, go to bed a bit earlier, get up a bit earlier, do X, Y, Z in a row before you do la 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 and all this stuff. So I'm like, I am trying my best to help you, but I can only help you so far. Like you have to do the rest. I can't literally do all of this for you. And I was like, so if you're then not doing the rest of that stuff and you're like, oh, I have this problem where I'm late again, yeah. you're late all the time. So I was like, you're late again. But I was like, no, you've got to see that you need to learn this lesson one way or another, that something's got to change. We can't just keep looping around this same circle again and again and again, doing all this, like being late and then saving your ass. And then you're never like getting out the door on time, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, started to get a bit teary. And I was like, I've raised him up until the, like all this whole time being like, everything I do has your best interest at heart. Like I was like, I same thing. I was like, I promise you that I'm not doing stuff reactively. I'm not doing stuff because I'm like, fuck you, I'm the adult, you're the kid, listen to me. Like, I don't have some, like, ego trip parenting you. Like, I'm not just, like, I know everything and you know nothing. Like, I was, like, everything I do is to teach you something or just to, like, you know, protect you from something or to love you, like, whatever. Yeah. And I was, like, I need you to learn this lesson right now that you have to go in and deal with that. If you get a detention, you get a detention. But if you get that detention, you're going to be less inclined to be late. And I won't have to keep shoving you out the door so hard and draining my energy. And you'll get better at like arriving at things on time and like, you know, organizing yourself in the morning to do whatever it is that you need to do for the day. Learn and like, this is an important lesson, lesson to learn. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I explained that to him and he was like, ah. and I was like, can you just see that I'm helping you learn a lesson right now? And he's like, yes. And I was like, just, and I was like, what does it feel like? And he's like, it feels like you hate me. And I was like, oh my God, honey, I don't hate you. And he was like, I know. And I was like, can you see that this will probably help you in the long run? He was like, yes. And then he got off the phone and he went and like copped his, you know, teacher scolding him or whatever it was. I don't even know. And he didn't end up getting any detention anyway. So, but he was because of the, like the, the mere idea of that being the possibility the next week, he was so much better. I was like, oh, my God, amazing. So that worked. It had a good outcome. But I was able to literally communicate with him through a lesson that he need to, needed to learn from. And it looked like discipline or whatever, but it wasn't. It was just like, this is a consequence if you don't fix the situation. And I'm trying to guide you to fix it. You need to play a part in this as well. You need to help yourself in one way or another. So, like, start being active in this and be a participant in figuring out how to get out the door on time and everything. And yeah, he got it. He understood. And I just thought that was amazing. And I was able to have that conversation with him because I've parented him in a way where he trusts that even if it's an uncomfortable thing for him to go through, I have his best interest at heart. Absolutely. And that's so beautiful because we do need to learn lessons in life. Yeah. And like sometimes they're, they're a little bit shit, but we do need to. Learn. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it's like, what if we were all able to go into the hard times and the lessons that we're learning with a bit more like, oh, it's cool, it's going to be uncomfortable, but that's fine, I've been prepared for that yeah. instead of being and prepared like, I, for like... I feel safe in mm. doing so and because I know like my mum's got my back and no matter what happens, like the outcome is actually going to be beneficial yeah. for everyone, even yeah. though it's going to be pooey going to detention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, and it's kind of like when we... Now when you think about yourself as an adult and you go into... Like before you're before living in more of a conscious way and something bad or hard happens, you're like, Why is this happening to me? Yeah, absolutely. You used to be like, Oh my god, my life's so shit, why is life so mean to me? Mm. Yeah. And now and it's like, Oh, thanks. 
Thanks yes. for the listens, guys. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yeah. That's where I'm at now. Oh, yay. When it's something, yeah, a lesson happens, and I'm like, oh, I'm in a lesson. I'm learning something right now, and I'm like, cool. Yeah. Or if someone tells me something, and I'm like, oh, you're just in a lesson right now, and you're learning X, Y, Z, and then, you know, they're, like, upset, and I'm like, I'm happy for you. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I tell them I'm happy for them? Because they're about to level up. But, like, most of the time I can't actually say that to my friends. And they're like, yeah, I know, it's good. And I'm like, that's good. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Do you have any, um, is there anything that you want to share with people? Is there, like, a message you want to get out? Is there any, like, little tips that you have to help someone who might be going into a spiritual awakening? And Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to pull some cards. Okay, cool. I just feel like I just want people to know that to be so gentle with themselves along the journey, not even just the spiritual journey, but like their journey into becoming like truly themselves. Because as you go through the journey, there's like a lot of unraveling Mm. and like clearing out and like clearing out as in like crying and letting go and processing like old emotions and old beliefs and old thought patterns that you used to just automatically have and they don't change in like a day you Mm. don't just automatically go I'm going to think about I'm not going to think like that anymore I'm going to think this way and it just doesn't happen overnight that you've got to constantly work at it Mm. so I just want people to just when they're going through big changes just surrender into it and just know that it's not forever like spiritual healings and like awakenings and upgrades and healing crises don't go on forever they're just like a little blip in the in the big journey yeah along the road and just like surrender into it and just trust and believe which is so like it's hard to have that yeah in the moment but you don't it doesn't have to be it's it's not a race Mm. like you're not competing with anybody this is purely for your own self yeah so there's no rush in it yeah and just take your time along the journey yeah and be proud of yourself for how far you come like each and every day and sometimes you do need to look backwards in order to be able to look forward and be like fuck yes yeah how far i've come even in like six months like look at me go yes yeah that's the important comparison to make is like where you've come from and where you're at yeah not against anybody else it's just who you used to be in comparison to who you are now and just seeing how far you've come even if it's like one slight change even if it's just you've just tweaked your diet Mm. that's fantastic yeah it's amazing it's important to celebrate the wins Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think everyone's got, like, such um, big expectations of themselves, of, like, what they need to achieve because, like, hustle culture has been such a thing for such a long time. And, you know, I mean, I can only speak for high achievers or just people with big goals and and stuff, but because that's kind of, like, what I know and what I am. But it's, yeah, realising that, slowing down and kind of just letting this process happen at its own pace is actually like a nice safe nurturing kind of place to be rather than being like oh my god should I should I be in a you know different place right now or um yeah because I move so quickly through life and do things so quickly and take on new things so rapidly so in moments when I'm like having to integrate or slow down or whatever I have to like actually tell myself to chill the thought process of like oh am I supposed to be doing something else right now am I supposed to like pick up more more work to do more like what more learning more am I do I start a project like (laughs) like that's a yeah it's important to just be able to be like surrender into it like you said so true I love that cool yay anything else is there anything you specifically want to know for yourself from you yeah (gasps) do I have any goobers on me (laughs) (laughs) like like spiritual goobers has anything stuck on me (laughs) because i've been doing like reiki and stuff on people and i'm still learning to have my own boundaries properly and i'm doing my absolute best but then i was like what if something what if i've taken something off someone and it's on me and then i was like Mm -hmm. oh maybe you'll see it if it's on me (laughs) 
You just need like a little. <laughs> we'll, we'll do a. We'll do a little cleanse. Clearing on you. You just need like a little energetic shower. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's so good. We have to go now because we need to give Esther a little, a yes. little treatment. Yes. Your time now. Okay, cool. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening.